What's going on, family? It's the lead pastor, Pastor RJ2 of the Jesus Center Church right here in Appomattox. And I want to say thank you for coming on in on this uh, morning. Um, as you all know that um, February is considered to be um, Black History Month. And so, you know, I want to honor in this message uh, someone that I want to put a, as an elevation towards. Um, before I get into that, though, I want to start off with a scripture that ties into um, the message uh, for today. And that scripture is coming from Psalm um, 75 and verse uh, 7. And this is what it says. It, is, it says, but it is God who executes judgment, putting down one and lifting up another. So for our African-American spotlight, I want to put the spotlight on a man by the name of Anthony Ray Hinton, Anthony Ray Hinton. Um, some of you may have heard of him, but I just want to give you a, a, a backdrop of what transpired within this man's life. Anthony Ray Hinton spent 29 years on Alabama's death row as a victim of wrongful conviction. Mistake witness identification, false or misleading forensic evidence, and also inadequate legal defense caused his imprisonment for a 1985 double robbery murder and an attempted murder by robbery that he did not commit. His case rested on a mistaken eyewitness testimony and a polygraph he passed was not allowed into evidence by the trial judge. In 1986, it took the jury just one hour to convict Anthony of both murders by a vote of 10 to 2. Alabama is one of three states that does not require a unanimous verdict to send a person to death row. After the murders of Thomas Wayne Vason and John Davison at two restaurants in Jefferson County in 1985. Anthony was identified as the shooter in a third robbery, which caused police to search Anthony's mother's house, where they found an old and very worn 38 revolver hidden under a mattress. Even though there was no other physical evidence tying him to any of the crimes, State firearm experts claim that the bullets used in all three robberies came from that gun. The defense expert whose specialty was vintage World War II weaponry and who was blind in one eye did not testify the weapon and was unable to properly examine the bullets using a microscope. Throughout this, Anthony maintained his innocence claiming that he had been working all night in a warehouse that would lock its employees in from the what? Inside. And so that he couldn't possibly have committed the murders. Neither of Anthony's cars fit the description of the suspected automobile and still the jury sentenced him to death. His convictions and death sentence were upheld on an appeal to the Alabama Court of Appeals and the Alabama Supreme Court. In 1998, Equal Justice Initiative, a nonprofit organization in Alabama that provides legal assistance to indigent defendants and prisoners, began representing Hinton. In February 2014, the U.S. Supreme Court vacated Anthony's conviction and death sentence and ordered a new trial. In preparation for a retrial, the prosecution had new experts re-examine the bullets and the gun. The prosecution experts also concluded that they could not link the bullets from the victims to the gun found in Hinton's house. Based on their findings, the Jefferson County District Attorney dismissed the charges and the Supreme Court of the United States exonerated Anthony in April of 2015. Anthony Hinton was one of the longest serving death row prisoners in Alabama's history and among the longest serving condemned prisoners to be freed after presenting evidence of innocence. I'm going to get back to this, but as right now, I want to drop in with another scripture. 
Psalm chapter nine, and I'm going to read verse three through four. This is what it says. It says, when my enemies turn back, they shall fall and perish at your presence. For you have maintained my right and my cause. You sat on the throne judging in righteousness. And this morning, family, God is telling somebody that the enemy of fear, the enemy of struggle and lack is about to be judged in your favor. You may be facing challenges that look permanent, dreams that seem impossible and you don't see a way. Don't worry, because God has a way. He's about to reverse some things and you're about to get a new verdict, family. Instead of dwelling on how big your enemies are, you need to start dwelling on how big your God is. All through the day, you got to do this. You should be saying, Lord, thank you that you're the God that reverses. Thank you that you are judging in my favor. The scripture says, greater is he that is in you than he that's in the world. So you don't have to be afraid of the enemy because when he looks at you, he just doesn't see you. Guess what? He sees who you belong to, who that purchased you by the blood of Jesus. Do y'all remember in scripture when Satan wanted to test Job? He had to ask God for permission. He couldn't just do whatever he wanted. Our father is on the throne. He is the judge and he has you where in the palm of his hand. And guess what, family? I've learned something. I learned that when you want to know what I've learned, you got to do what? I've learned that we think that it's God versus the enemy. That's what I thought. And I had to learn this, but it's not that. But the enemy is not an equal opposite of God. See, we have hot versus cold, light versus darkness, good versus evil. Those are equal opposites, but it's not God versus the enemy. See, God created the enemy. God is the creator. Satan is a created being. He is a fallen angel. He wasn't made in the image of God. But guess what? You were made in the image of God. But if you see the enemy as being the powerful force that can stop you, control you and determine your destiny, that you are giving him power over you that he does not have. When Jesus came out of the grave, he took away the keys of death and hell. He said, all power has been given unto me and now I'm giving it to you. See, family, you are more powerful than any force that's trying to stop you. The enemy has already been defeated. We know the final outcome. God says he's going to judge in your favor. See, God knows what is owed to you. He knows every person that's done you wrong, every injustice and every bad break that you have gotten. And he's not just going to bring you out. But guess what, family? He's going to pay you back when he settles your case. You're, you're going to come out fully compensated, blessed and then honored. People will know that God has ruled in your favor because God is a God that reverses. So, family, there are things we struggle with that have been passed down in our family line. A lot of people may not believe that. But I believe in generational curses. See, it's not a coincidence that we're tempted in certain areas, having to deal with an addiction or depression or a stronghold. See, those are spirits that keep getting passed down from generation to generation, just like we can pass down our physical traits, our looks, our size, our hair color. We can also pass down our attitudes, our dysfunction, our depression. See, the enemy didn't start with you. He started way back in your family line. But one day, and I believe today is that day that God says enough is enough. I'm putting an end to this generational curse. God says reverse. The curse is broken. And some of the things that you're dealing with, things that have been passed down it didn't start with you, family, but guess what? I believe it's going to end with you. God is saying, I'm about to reverse the negative baggage in your family line. 
I'm going to reverse the dysfunction, the lack, and the struggle. This is a new day. You're the difference maker. Freedom family is coming to your house. Wholeness is coming to your family line. But sometimes, sometimes we make it harder than usual. How many of you all remember the story of Jonah? God told Jonah to go to the city of Nineveh. He didn't want to go there. He wanted to go to Tarsus. God didn't stop him from going the wrong way. He didn't stop him from getting on the boat, but he allowed all that to happen. But guess what? When it happened, a huge storm arose and the crew threw Jonah overboard. He should have drowned, but that's when God stepped in and said, overrule, reverse. He had the fish to swallow him and take him to dry ground. God didn't stop all of Jonah's mistakes, family, but he did stop him from missing his destiny. God said reverse. How many of us would not be here if God had not reversed our wrong choices? You could have married the wrong person, but God said reverse. He shut the door. You lost your temper and were about to tell your boss off. But God said reverse and he closed your mouth. That addiction could have taken your life, but God said reverse because I have destiny for you. And since we're talking about the judicial system this morning, I want to also talk about the spiritual judicial system. In the legal system, family, a court will rule on a case and give its verdict. But just because you have the verdict doesn't mean it's final. You can appeal that verdict to a higher court. If they see it differently, because they have no, they have more authority that they can overrule what the lower court decided. There can be a ruler from a local court, a regional court, a state court, and they all can see it one way. But if the Supreme Court sees it another way, then all the lower court's rulings are nullified and of no effect. The Supreme Court is the highest authority. They can reverse any decision. So family, our God is called the most high God, the righteous judge. Jesus is our advocate before the father. He is our defense attorney that shields and blocks. Satan is called the accuser of the brethren. He's always accusing us of something. He is called the prosecuting attorney, but God is a Supreme court all by himself. He can overturn and reverse any decision. When the lower court tells you you never get well, God says overturn, reverse. I'm restoring health back into you. You think you made too many mistakes. God says overturn, reverse. My mercy is bigger than any mistake. You may say I never get out of debt, but God says overturn, reverse. You will lend and not borrow. Family, do not let the lower court decision become permanent in your thinking. Do not let it discourage you to where you quit believing because it's only temporary. That may be the way it is now, but your case is under appeal. It's being reviewed. And the good news is the judge in your case is the highest authority. The one that makes the final decision. It just so happens that he's that we are all related to him and he's not a distant cousin family. Guess what? He's your heavenly father, the righteous judge. John chapter 11. And I'm going to be reading verses 11 through 15. And then I'm going to jump on down to verses 34 through 44. It ties in with the message. It says, Jesus said unto them, our friend Lazarus sleeps, but I go that I may wake him up. Then the disciples said, Lord, if he sleeps, he would get well. However, Jesus spoke of his death, but they thought that he was speaking about taking rest in sleep. Then Jesus said to them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And I'm glad for your sakes that I was not there that you may believe. And nevertheless, let us go to him. And he said, where have you laid him? And they said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. And then the Jews said, see how he loved him. 
And some of them said, could not this man who opened the eyes of the blind also have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again, groaning in himself, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone lay against it. And Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of him who was who was dead, said to him, Lord, by this time there is a stench for he has been dead four days. And Jesus said to her, did I not say to you that if you will believe you will see the glory of God? Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead man was lying. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. And I know that you always hear me, but because of the people who are standing by, I said this, that they may believe that you sent me. Now, when he had said these things, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he who died came out bound hand and foot with grave clothes and his face was wrapped with a cloth. Jesus said to them, loose him and let him go. I want to share something about this story. Even family, when we in this situation here with Jesus talking about Lazarus, he said that Lazarus was sleeping, but actuality, he was dead. They thought that all was, was lost. And they say, well, since he's dead, hey, if you would have been here, then he would not have died. But Jesus said, you know what? It was good that I was not here so that you may believe. And what did Jesus do? What they thought that couldn't be reversed, Jesus did it. He reversed the situation. So family, what I'm trying to say is this. When your back's against the wall, when you're down and out, when you don't have any answers, see any way out, when you think, can nothing help you? I'm so far in, I can't get out. You got to believe that there's no place too far where God cannot reach you. There's no place, there's no thing that he cannot get you out of. That he can, guess what? He can reverse whatever the situation that you may be in. But you got to have the faith to believe that God sits on the throne and that he can reverse any situation. And to tie back into the story that I read about Anthony Ray Hinton, I believe that because he had this, this unction that, you know what, I am innocent. I did not do this. That within the story, God stepped in. Let me move a little further here. The cop that arrested Anthony said, we have decided to charge you with first degree capital murder. He said, I don't care if you did it or didn't do it, but I'm going to make sure that you are found guilty of it because there are five things that are going to convict you of it. Number one, you are black. Number two, a white man is going to say you shot him. Number three, there's a white prosecutor. Number four, there's a white judge. And number five, there's an all white jury. And you know what that spells? It spells conviction, 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 and conviction. Everything was against him. All the odds was against him. But there is God. God said, I can reverse. I am the Supreme Court. And he reversed that thing. Hinton said he didn't speak to another human being for three and a half years. But one day a man was placed next to him named Henry. And Henry was a son of a Ku Klux Klansman. And he had killed a black man. And he was in prison on death row for doing so. He hadn't spoke to anybody for three and a half years, but he befriended this man named Henry. And by the time before Henry passed, died, and it was executed, Anthony changed this man's perspective about black people, how he had viewed what was poured into him for years and years that was embedded in him by his family. I believe, family, that God stepped in. And then when when Henry got his reversal of his image of how he viewed black people, that's when I believe that God stepped in and gave Anthony his reversal. See, sometimes, family, God wants to use us. He wants to not only work in us, but he wants to work through us so that we can impact somebody else out there. 
And sometimes our reversal is contingent upon somebody else. And once we do some things, guess what? Then God steps in and he reversed some things in our situation. Family, I believe that God can reverse things no matter how bad it may seem. It don't matter how deep you may be in something. God can reverse it. Let us pray. Father God, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I thank you on this morning, Father, that you are the whole entire Supreme Court. You sit on the throne and you rule from on high. You see all and you know all. And Father God, that you care for all of us. You love us. And no matter what situation we may face, whether we caused it or not, you know. And if we rely upon you, if we invite you into the situation, when we proclaim your goodness, when we speak to you and ask you to step in, that we can believe and we can know for sure that you're the God of the reverse. Father, I thank you on today for those that may be listening in, that may be in a situation right now, facing something right now. Lord, give them the comfort to know that Lord, you can reverse some things in, the, in their life, but they got to hand it over to you. Father, I thank you for this message and I ask Lord that you may continue to use me as your manservant, your vessel to speak to your people. Father, I thank you for what you've done, what you're gonna do in us, to us, and through us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. God bless you, family, for allowing me this short time to speak a timely word in this season that we are in that may help you out so that you can believe that God can reverse your situation. Family, I love you. I thank you for your support, and hope I see you back here next time. God bless you.